Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to briefly go over SI Analyzer by Keysight in Altium Designer. So let's get started. First, let's open up the tool by going to Tools, SI Analyzer by Keysight. And what is going to happen now is Altium Designer is going to auto-populate our workspace with nets and net classes it thinks we're most likely wanting to analyze. So let's give that a moment to load up. Now here we can see all of our net classes and the nets within the net classes. If we just click on the uh, little drop arrow here. We don't want to analyze all these. We just really want to look at one net today. So we can start to close these net classes one at a time or using the manage nets button, we can check on and off all the nets we want to use. We're going to go with this net class here. And now that we have chosen the net class we want to uh, look at today, we can assign a specification so we can look at the constraints we want to analyze against. If we click on Assign Specification, we can choose a uh, specification from our library, or if we click on Custom Constraints, we can set our own right now. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do 100 ohms with 5% tolerance. 550 picoseconds for the delay, the insertion loss we can leave alone, and let's do minus 16 for the return loss. So now that we have our constraints, let's go ahead and analyze. And right now, Altium Designer is generating an ODB++ file. It's going to send that to Keysight and then they will send back the results to us here directly in Altium Designer. Okay, our analysis is done, and right away, just with the green and red color scheme, we can see where we have an error. And we have three errors here with this first net in our net class. We have a problem with impedance, delay, and return loss. And we're gonna fix those today. I wanted to show that when you expand your net, you can see the transmission line broken up into different segments all the way from the start to the end. Also, when you have errors, what you want to know is how do you fix them? If you click on show report, a report will appear and we'll go through that in one moment. Here it is. So we have our layer stack, constraint check, insertion loss, and return loss here. These are interactive graphs. You can click on the different nets. You can show just um, the nets you want and even just the violating nets here. So for instance, here we just have one failed net that we want to see. So let's click on that. Um, you could add cursors, there's other stuff there, but really what I wanna take a look at is this portion here, the summary. And the summary will let you know what the problem is and how to fix it for each of these problems. So here, um, there's one, two, three, four, five ways we can fix our issues. So we can read through that. I just wanted to show that report. These reports can also be saved and exported later to be shared with your entire team. So going back to this net we want to fix, let's click on show on PCV. And here is the net in question. And we have a SI analyzer by Keysight panel. And in this panel, we can take a look at uh, we can specify what we want to look at here, so we can look at the entire net class or, again, the specific net that we're going to analyze. Here we have just the net we're looking at with impedance, delay, and return loss violations. Here we can turn on and off the violations we want to look at. So if you have a lot of nets with a lot of violations, you can just narrow down the violations you want to look at and work with and tackle those one at a time. There is a heat map here, and this heat map is for impedance and delay. And you can add probes to your uh, heat maps for both the delay and the impedance. So here, this is the delay. Of course, you can always add images. 
and those will be added as part of your report. But let's go ahead now and just fix this issue, right? So taking a look at my, uh, my trace here, let's turn off the heat map. We see some, I don't say discontinuities, but some notches here. It's not very smooth. We're using 45 degrees. We're going through, uh, we're very close to these vias here. Uh, there's a lot of things that could be affecting our results. So what I want to do is actually um, delete and reroute this entire trace. And one more thing I do want to mention before we go ahead and delete and retrace is what's nice about this tool is you can fix things incrementally. So I could, you know, fix this little notch here and here, run the analysis and see if that changes anything, maybe run the trace path through this open space here rather than being squeezed through all the vias, see if that changes. So that's really nice to incrementally fix and update different uh, traces so you can see what is affecting your results. Let's go ahead and remove all traces of <laughs> all traces of our trace and uh, reroute this. So we'll do a interactive differential pair routing for our routing mode. I'll press tab and you'll notice that I'm in any angle routing with a hug and push conflict resolution. And let's go ahead and start to trace or start to route. And not the best routing, but it should be good enough for what we're doing now. And you'll notice that my path is more direct. <clears throat> I have a more direct path. I'm using curved routing. So let's see how that affects everything. If we go back to our tool our analysis tool, it says that our PCB is outdated because we just updated the trace path. So let's go ahead and refresh our workspace here. With our workspace updated, let's analyze everything one more time and take a look at the results. Okay, and very quickly with our red and green color scheme, we can see everything is green except this net right here, but we're not going to worry about that. We just took a look at this first net, and we can see we are passing all of our uh, constraints. We're within tolerance for what we've set. And that's all I want to go over today. Um, there's still reports and sharing and um, managing specifications, things that we didn't look at but those are available in a webinar and also in our documentation so thank you very much and we'll see you next time bye